guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll speak about North Korean interactions, bombs. Um, but first we'll do the answers for the previous uh, homework in my last video. So you had to draw the geometric isomers of um, this octahedral compound. Octahedral means six ligands. So you have, now this is trans. Why? Because this, uh, the chlorine atoms are on opposite ends, right? They're not on the same side, so it is trans. For cis, they will be on the same side. You can see that the chlorine atoms are on one side and then you have <coughs> the ammonia molecules scattered over the rest of the bonds. For the second question, you had to draw the uh, show the reaction and then uh, show Kf, which is the formation constant. So this is the reaction. You see that ammonium, uh, it's not, not ammonium, um, silver and ammonia, the coordination compound, they dissociate into silver ion and then ammonia, which is a neutral molecule, so it does not have a charge. We know that Kf is one over Kd, which is equal to reactant over product, which is equal to the um, compound on the left side of the arrow over the compounds on the right side of the arrow. Okay, now let's start with today's lesson, uh, non-covalent interactions. So we have two types, right? So we have intermolecular forces and then we have intramolecular forces. So now intermolecular is between molecules, right? And it is responsible for like melting point or boiling point of a substance. Intramolecular forces, on the other hand, is between atoms within a molecule, right? So it is responsible for the stability of the structure, the stability of the substance. Intramolecular forces are stronger than intermolecular forces. It's like it's easier to separate two different molecules, but to separate the atoms within a molecule, it's it needs more energy. So the first type we'll speak about dipole dipole forces. It's a type of um, intermolecular force. We're going to speak about intermolecular forces. Okay, so you have a solid phase and the positive ends of polar molecules get attracted to the negative ends of others. As you can see, the negative attracts the positive of the other atom. And the greater the dipole moments, uh, the greater the force. The greater the attraction, the greater the dipole-dipole. The dipole forces, they become weaker with increasing distance. So as the sizes of um, elements or molecules increase, the dipole-dipole forces decrease. Second, we'll speak about ion-dipole forces. This, uh, obviously, because of ion, it depends on the charge and the size of the ion and the magnitude of the dipole. Cations um, have generally... Um, bigger ion dipole forces because they are smaller in size than anions. They are on the left side of the periodic table. For example, you have NaCl, which is an ionic compound, and it dissolves in water, which is a polar compound. So you have ion and you have dipole, right? So you, the positive ion attracts the negative and the negative attracts the positive. Moving on to the third one, it is dispersion forces. It is a type of dipole-dipole force. And it is also known as London forces. One, two, and three, or dispersion forces, are the more commonly known as van der Waals forces. Now, there are different types. For example, you can have ion-induced dipole or dipole-induced dipole. This dispersion force is about inducing a charge or inducing dipole. Right, So the polar ions, they move towards uh, another molecule and they induce a charge in the other molecules which are non-polar or they do not have a charge. Right, So ion-induced dipole is where an ion induces a charge and dipole-induced dipole is where one dipole induces a charge in another one, which is polar. What is important about London forces, you need to know that every molecule, every compound has dispersion forces. And uh, the larger and the heavier 
the mo molecule or the compound, the greater the L London forces. So as you increase the distance, as you increase the size, you'll see that the London forces increase as well. Moving on to the last one for this video, we'll speak about a very important type of bond. It is the hydrogen bond. Um, it is a very strong bond. It is um, actually the strongest uh, amongst the intermolecular forces. And you need to remember three letters or the word FON. Uh, F stands for fluorine, O for oxygen and N for nitrogen. These three elements are highly electronegative. So these electronegative atoms have a lone pair of electrons available that they can donate and form this hydrogen bond. So we have two types. You have intermolecular hydrogen bonding and you have intramolecular. I'm going to show you. So um, hydrogen bond is responsible for increasing the boiling points and increasing the energy of a molecule. So in this molecule, you can see that there is um, a hydrogen bond within two different molecules of water between the H and the O. The, the O is electronegative atom and it donates a pair of electrons and then you have delta positive and delta negative on the actual um, elements in the molecule. The other one is salicylic acid. You can see that within the molecule itself, it's not two different molecules, you have a bond, hydrogen bond between the O and the H. It is important for you to know about hydrogen bonding because um, this bond exists uh, within DNA, RNA within proteins as well. So in DNA between adenine and thymine and cytosine and guanine, hydrogen bond exists. Okay, let me tell you which bond is stronger. So first is ionic bond, it is the strongest, followed by covalent, then hydrogen bond, and then van der Waals. We said van der Waals were the one, two, and three forces, which was dipole-dipole forces, and it was ion dipole and then dispersion forces. Starting with ionic bond, it is the bond uh, mainly with between the metals from the first or second group in the periodic table and like NaCl uh, with elements in the latter groups like seven, like six. So NaCl, um, magnesium, chloride, they're all ionic compounds and they're really quite like strong, right? Then we have covalent, which is like normal molecules, for example, halides, chlorine, bromine, iodine, or water molecules, carbon dioxide, oxygen, for example, they're all covalent bonds. Then hydrogen bond, we spoke about bond, so remember that. And van der Waals, we said the intermolecular forces. Dipole-dipole, ion-dipole, and London forces. Now it's time for some homework, some questions. So the first question is a multiple choice question. Which chemical compound can participate in the formation of a hydrogen bond? So A, you have methylamine, B, you have hydrogen. C, you have methane, D, you have carbon monoxide, or E, you have sodium hydroxide. Sorry, uh, sodium hydride. Okay, the second question is, CS2, carbon sulfide, has which type of bond? So name the bond present. Then question number three is, what type of chemical bonds exist in ammonium chloride? Remember, um, bonds with an S, so it has to be more than one. And the last question is, which compound has greater London forces? Is it A, which is methane? Is it B, which is methanol? Or is it C, methanoic acid? And that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. Bye.